All right. Well, thank you all for being here today. We're here today to discuss the Anti-Human Trafficking Protective Response Act, House Bill 234, that has been introduced here in the Georgia General Assembly. This legislation is landmark bill to address the evil of human trafficking in Georgia, and it does it in a comprehensive way. First of all, the bill expands human trafficking criminal offense to those who enable traffickers to operate. And those are individuals who benefit financially or otherwise from human trafficking, or those who solicit or patronize. Additionally, the legislation empowers district attorneys and law enforcement through the nuisance statute to take civil action against properties that are habitually the cause or places where human trafficking and sex offenses occur. This is an incredibly important component of the bill. Finally, this bill makes clear that victims of human trafficking should receive trauma-informed treatment and not be treated as criminals. Georgia, like many of our other states, like many of the other states and all of our surrounding states, will now require that to be charged with prostitution, you have to be an adult. Children should not be charged with the offense of prostitution. And on top of that, DFACS is empowered to immediately provide trauma-informed services through certified providers. And so the legislation makes clear that that is the best approach to ensure that kids who are rescued receive the treatment that they need. We're incredibly proud of this legislation. And although I'm honored to carry this legislation, this is not my work alone whatsoever. We have an incredible bipartisan coalition of legislators, members of law enforcement, advocates, and organization leaders who are here with us here today because this legislation is the result of months and even years of work on these issues. And today I'll, I'll be able to introduce each of the legislators who, who um, are here today and, and our other speakers. But I initially became involved in this issue because I, as a legislator from Decula and Lawrenceville and Gwinnett County, was approached by my state senator who told me about the evil criminal enterprises pursuing human trafficking and allowing for sexual exploitation of children to occur. And that is Senator Renee Unterman. Senator Unterman, after bringing this to my attention, uh, allowed me to participate in the legislation that she's carried many years. And as a former assistant district attorney myself, it was an area where I was able to be involved and, and do some good. But it was all because of her initial foresight into this issue and her incredible work. If you would please join me in welcoming Senator Renee Unterman as we ask her to make a few comments. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Evstration. What an honor to be here. And more importantly, I want to thank the advocates that are here and especially the survivors of human trafficking and human bondage. It takes a lot of courage to be able to be here. You know, it's ironic that we're here today, almost 10 years later to the day. In February of 2009, we started out on this journey talking about 55-year-old men unfortunately having sex with 12-year-old little girls. And I'll never forget, unfortunately, I was told, Senator, you are not going to talk about this subject matter. But what I'd like to do is fast forward and look at the last 10 years and look at the progression. And when you hear Representative Evstration talk about, now we're getting down to the week. We've overcome the obstacle of victimization. We have wonderful advocacy groups like Street Grace and Georgia Cares that are here with us today. We are now providing therapeutic services. So if we take a child off the street, we're just not taking them off the street, but they go into services where they receive rehabilitative therapeutic services so that they can recover and they can get on 
along with their lives. And that's why it's so significant today that we have survivors here, because you can survive. And more importantly, Georgia is very, very interested in this issue. For the last 10 years, Governor Deal and Mrs. Deal, former Governor Deal, has worked on this issue. And we're very, very fortunate now to continue that legacy. We have a new governor and a new first lady, uh, Governor Kemp and Mrs. Kemp, that are very interested in this issue. And Representative Evstration is exactly correct. This took a team effort. There were many people on the basement floor, like Sam Mullins, like Edward Lindsay, a former representative, uh, like Mayor Kasim Reed. We've had many, many people who have helped. We have with us back here now a uh, uh, Commission Chairman John Eves, who's interested in this. I know the new mayor is interested. You know, now it's kind of like a fad, and fortunately it is a fad, because we've raised the bar about human trafficking and bondage, and saying that the state of Georgia not only doesn't like it, but we're doing something about it, we're putting money in the budget, and we have progressed. It's just an honor for me to be able to be here. I know that Representative Evstration, uh, former Rep Representative Buzz Brockaway, Representative Silcox, the list goes on and on and on. Andy Welch, we've all worked on issues. Our most significant accomplishment was that in 2016, we passed a constitutional amendment in the state of Georgia. And when you ask a legislator, what is the most difficult thing you do when you're at the state capitol? Because it takes a two-thirds vote in the House and the Senate. We put that constitutional amendment on the ballot, and guess what? Over 83% of Georgians agreed with us. This is, this is a significant issue, and yes, we are going to take care of our children. So we're very excited. 3.978 million Georgians voted yes on this issue. That is significant. The movement is moving forward. It's just my honor to be able to be here and to uh, go along with this new bill. So with that, I'll pass it back to Representative Evstration. Thank you, Senator. After the Super Bowl week, when all the numbers were tallied, it's my understanding that the FBI made 169 arrests in human trafficking investigations, and the GBI made 21 arrests. And as part of these investigations, 18 victims were saved and were rescued. Really incredible stats when you think. <laughs> these successes were only because of a great partnership between f the federal, state, and local governments. And that includes, on the federal level, great outstanding work with the FBI and ICE. On the local level, uh, We've, we've had an incredible partnership with county government and with, uh, with state government as well. And at this time, it's my honor to invite up Scott Dutton, who is the interim director of the GBI during the periods that we've been discussing here. If you please uh, join me in welcoming Scott. Uh, Chairman Efstration and the leadership of the General Assembly have moved this important issue in a very important or a very positive direction. Good policy followed by law enforcement and victims assistance programs are, are a winning combo. And I can tell you from the standpoint of talking about law enforcement across the state of Georgia, in the state of Georgia, the uh, Georgia uh, ICAC task force is comprised of a, over 230 law enforcement agencies. And what that says, is there is that much interest in the law enforcement in the state of Georgia to be part of this important mission. They do this through tough budget cuts. They do this with lack of manpower, but it is an important issue for them to do this. Uh, it is a successful program. It works extremely well. The talent that the deputies, police officers, and agents put into this effort uh, in combating tra uh, child sex trafficking is, is, is second to none. I will say from the standpoint of across the nation as it relates to ICAC task forces that Georgia has one of the largest, the most involved uh, task forces as it relates to this. So from the standpoint of policy that works 
for law enforcement, uh, we're in a good position. Uh, we look forward to more work. Uh, we look forward to uh, pushing this effort even further. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. At this time, it's my honor to invite up Representative Deb Silcox, Deborah Silcox, who represents part of Fulton County, and uh, to speak on this issue. Please join me in welcoming Representative Silcox. Thank you so much, Representative Upstration. It is such a pleasure for me to be here today. Um, for me personally, I got involved with this issue uh, with Senator Unterman, mainly because uh, I had a family member that was directly affected by this. And so it is a personal issue for me, and I just applaud Street Grace and Georgia Cares for all they have done to raise awareness on this issue statewide. I am so excited that we are going to remove this blight on the, the reputation of our state and that we are going to have statewide rehabilitation services available for these victims. And I just thank you for today, and I thank you for all your attention to this issue. In the great partnership between the state and local government, our local partners being willing to work on this issue is critically important. And a tireless advocate who reached out to me very early on is Chairman Rob Pitts chairman of the Fulton County Commission. We're so honored to have Chairman Pitts here today. I want to ask him to say a few things. And I have to apologize. No, I said the wrong name. I'm sorry. That's OK. As a former county commissioner, I can tell you I appreciate your work. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I will. <laughs> I will be uh, very brief in my remarks, but uh, we've been involved in this now for over a year since I've been back in my current position as chair of the Board of Commissioners of Fulton County. And it is a partnership, and I, uh, when I first met the representative and we began to talk about this, we identified some missing links in, in our, our collective efforts. And he and his leadership, uh, with the help of uh, other members of the House and Senate, uh, stepped forward and this is what's before us now. It is another tool, I think, in our toolkit to help uh, us in this fight. It's not over with. There was a lot of attention brought to this during the Super Bowl, but what I've always said, the Super Bowl was here, it's gone. But our efforts, our work is going to continue. And that's why I'm so happy today to join with the state and thankful that the state is stepping forward to help in this fight. But more importantly, uh, it's the advocates that I'd like to thank. They've been on the forefront of this fight, keeping all of us aware of what's going on. I've had many uh, meetings, uh, visits uh, by victims, by advocates, uh, members of the Georgia General Assembly, my good friend in particular. So we're all in this together, and I believe that we're going to win this fight sooner rather than later. So thank you. Thank all of you, members of the General Assembly, for your support. Thank you, Chairman Pitts. Chairman Andy Welch, representative in the State House of Representatives with us here today, a tireless advocate and um, sponsor of legislation in the past in ending human trafficking in Georgia. Please join me in welcoming Chairman Welch. Good afternoon. Um, on May 5th, 2015, Governor Deal signed into law Georgia's Safe Harbor uh, Act, also known as Rachel's Law. And with the leadership of Senator Unterman, who sponsored the legislation in the Senate, and F, uh, Representative Estration, who also sponsored a mirror image legislation in the House, we were able to pass that legislation that did two essential things. One, create a safe harbor for victims uh, in sex trafficking. Number two, created a funding mechanism for the rehabilitative services that you've heard about today. But what's important is that in creating a safe harbor that was designed to provide protection by the, by the name of that act, provide protection from victims, from prosecution, and the storms of prejudice that are associated with the forced prostitution that is human trafficking. But Representative Efstration's legislation today is going to remove and eliminate those storms of prejudice it's going to quiet forever those fears by victims who feel they cannot come in to that safe harbor for fear of prosecution. It eliminates those storms. It calms those waves. 
With the bill that Representative Estration has put forth before the General Assembly, the innocence that has been taken away from the victims will no longer be overshadowed by the clouds of prejudice and the winds and waves of fear of prosecution that pushed them further away from the safety that we try to provide them. Now they can come in wherever they may be and seek the refuge that this state provides. Unlike any other state, we are going to, be, we are going to provide that place for them to come in from safety, out of the shadows. We're going to hear in this place, in, this, in these hallowed halls, for once the cries of those victims, the cries that led them to the streets that weren't heard by their parents or guardians, but were heard as sirens calls, if you will, by those who want to exploit them, by those who want to abuse them and molest them, we heard those cries. Representative Estration heard those cries. Senator Unterman heard those cries. And other leaders that you've heard from today heard those cries. And today, we're going to bring those cries home here. We're going to silence the cries because we're going to provide them with the services, the attention, the safety that they need. And so it is an honor to be a part of this movement. And if you wouldn't mind, Representative Estration, I'd like to just pro provide a copy of the resolution that was signed by myself, by Representative Estration, Representative Ballinger, Representative Reeves, and Representative Gilliard, and Representative Silcox, to both Georgia Cares and to the GBI for their diligent work over the Super Bowl weekend that Representative Estration was just referring to. If I could just present that to them. Great partnership within state government is so very important to bring legislation like this. And we're honored to have with us today Tom Rawlings, Director of DFACS. Please join me in welcoming. Thank you, Representative Estration and Senator Underman and all of those who are behind me who have worked so tirelessly. As Senator Underman mentioned, we have, I think, collectively been working on this issue at least 10 years now. Um, I, I think what I want everybody to remember that is that I personally and of course those I work with have a special interest in this issue because unfortunately many of those who are most likely to fall into this situation of terrible exploitation are those children and youth who have already been exploited, who have already been traumatized, who have perhaps come into our foster care system because of child abuse and neglect. And so when those young people reach a certain age, they are very vulnerable. And this particular legislation gives us exactly what we need, number one, in terms of the ability to very quickly respond to them when they are identified by the GBI or by Georgia Cares or by law enforcement or by our own folks as being victims of any sort of sexual or labor exploitation, frankly. And secondly, we understand that the approach we need is one of therapy. We have to remember, and this, I'm so grateful for Representative Registration and all the advocates here for remembering this very key fact. These young people have been traumatized beyond belief. And the only way to rescue and rehabilitate them is by providing them with those very intensive services that will allow them to overcome the trauma they've experienced and to go on and live wholesome, full lives. So thank you very much for your work. Thank you. It's an honor to have Heather Stockdale with us today from Georgia Cares. And if you would please join me in welcoming her. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you to Representative Chairman Estration um, for having us here. Really honored to be here with so many advocates and really honored um, to receive that resolution as well. So thank you so much. Um, Georgia Cares is the statewide victim service agency for all children in the state of Georgia who have been victimized through sexual exploitation and trafficking. Um, I'm here today to tell you that this is a real issue in our state. Last year alone, we served 789 youth victimized in this way. 
Um, we talked recently about Super Bowl numbers, and you saw the great press releases coming out from many of our law enforcement partners. But as so many have said here today, um, not only do we need to focus on the facilitators, the buyers, and focus on the demand side, um, which Street Grace will speak about in a minute, um, but for us uh, at Georgia Cares, it's about the kids. It's about these children who have been traumatized and abused in this way. And over Super Bowl, the month of Super Bowl, um, from January through all of the Super Bowl efforts through February 3rd, there were 130 youth who were referred to Georgia Cares for this type of victimization. So that is a lot of kids. This is happening in our own backyards, in our Georgia communities. Um, that you've heard so many great things that this bill today is sponsored by Chairman Efstration does. Um, we give additional tools to our district attorneys. Um, we give additional tools to DFACS, our great partner, in helping find um, and identify these youth. But my most favorite part of the bill, of course, is the protective response portion. So this bill is actually called the Anti-Human Trafficking Protective Response. And the two elements of protective response are one, removing criminalization for youth, and two, providing those intensive specialized services that are trauma-informed for kids who have fallen prey to this evil. Um, for me, what that means as a state and as all of us as advocates is that we are taking a stand, and in Georgia we are saying that there is no such thing as a child prostitute. So I am honored to be here today. Thank you everyone um, for your support. Thank you to so many of the legislators and leaders that are here today. Um, this is our year to take that stand and I'm excited about moving forward. Um, so I have now the great honor of um, introducing one of our closest partners um, with Street Grace, and they'll speak a little bit more about the work that we do, but when we talk about this bill and the other tools that it gives for us to look at the demand portion, um, they are the leader in our state focusing on demand, um, those men and women who would both buy and sell um, our children. So with us here today, um, Kamala Wright Zolfagari, hopefully I didn't, hopefully I pronounced it correctly, um, is here to speak with you. You, um, from Street Grace, so please join me in welcoming her. Thank you so much, Heather, for all you do to serve our victims that we recover. Thank you, Representative Chairman of Stration, for all of your work on this bill. It's really an honor and privilege to work with somebody who understands the trafficking law so well and understands what our victims need. Um, Thank you to DFAX and to Chairman Rollins, who is willing to come together and say, this is how you can empower us to best serve our kids. And thank you for GBI. Um, GBI's law enforcement efforts are really known throughout the country for their expertise at focusing on demand. They do operations, and when they have arrests, their arrests are for people who are trying to purchase young children from Georgia. And that is really something that is, they are known as experts around the country for doing that. At Street Grace, our mission is to prevent human trafficking from happening. Our goal would be to give Georgia Cares and their hard workers an easy job because human trafficking no longer happens. And one of the ways we do that is by focusing on demand. It is those who attempt to purchase our children that fuel the human trafficking that happens. Some of this legislation is some of the broadest and most comprehensive that we have ever had the privilege of working on. And many of the important priorities in this leg legislation came out of the Joint Senate HHS Judiciary and Public Safety meetings chaired by Chairwoman Renee Unterman. And so we, of course, always thank her for her continued long-standing leadership on this issue. This bill, HB 234, will ensure that human trafficking victims in Georgia are treated like victims and that they get the services that they need and the services they deserve. It fully recognizes that children under 18 cannot consent to commercial sex and it protects our children. There is no such thing as child prostitution. When a child is bought or sold for sex, that is a very serious crime. 
And this bill will ensure that those who perpetrate that crime, those who purchase our children, are the ones held accountable and that our victims are protected and given the services they need. We also so appreciate our hotel and lodging partners, AHOA and GHLA, that has spent so much time and effort educating their members, the hotel owners, and the employees in the hotels on how to combat human trafficking, how to spot human trafficking, and how to really make a difference. And so many of our cases would not be if we did not have great people in our hotels who were calling law enforcement and helping protect our children. Unfortunately, there are still some rogue bad actor hotels out there, and this legislation is going to allow prosecutors to shut down the bad actors while protecting and encouraging all of those hotels that are such important partners with us in this fight. And when I think about the importance of the human trafficking legislation around the hotels, I remember two cases I prosecuted. One case while a prosecutor in Fulton County Two 14-year-old girls were picked up by a trafficker and taken to a hotel. That night, as they were checking in, the clerk recognized one of these girls from an FBI missing persons flyer, immediately contacted law enforcement. These girls were recovered within 24 hours. And not only are both of their traffickers still in prison, but they're was the very first case in Georgia where we were able to prosecute a buyer for trafficking because of that rapid response and that cooperation of that hotel. But there was another very similar case that I prosecuted from the Attorney General's office. Two 14-year-olds and a 12-year-old were picked up by a trafficker and taken to a hotel. Those, the police came to that hotel looking for the girls. The hotel clerk said, we have not seen them. The hotel clerk then went to these girls and said, I know you're underage. I know the police are looking for you. I know what's happening to you. You need to take your trafficker and leave so there isn't any trouble. We were able to prosecute that trafficker GBI worked three years on a case to identify that trafficker and finally get him arrested and prosecuted. But during those three years, those girls and multiple other girls were exploited, all because we had a bad actor that wasn't cooperating and wasn't protecting Georgia's children. This legislation is key. We can't overlook the amazing work that the Cobb County District Attorney's Office has just done with Chuck Boring taking the lead on the first nuisance case to close down a bad actor hotel that was participating in human trafficking. But that law greatly needs to be strengthened and this bill will do that and we deeply thank Chairman Efstration for doing this for us. Are there any questions? Yes. We have a very comprehensive bill here in, this, in the Anti-Human Trafficking Protective Response Act. And what I think you've heard today is we're approaching this issue in a comprehensive manner. First of all, going after the traffickers and those who enable the trafficking to occur. And also empowering district attorneys and law enforcement to shut down properties where human trafficking could occur or is happening. And then on top of that, providing trauma-informed services to the victims. It's a very comprehensive bill, but what we're also seeing is there are other pieces of legislation that are being introduced this year that are addressing other aspects of this issue. And I want to thank Attorney General Chris Carr for his leadership, as well as Assistant District Attorney Chuck Boring 
who has brought many of those issues here to legislators. And I think going forward, in a comprehensive manner, many aspects of law are going to be reviewed and, and considered so that we can continue each session to address this evil criminal enterprise in a comprehensive way. Are there other questions? This is Phil. Talk about traffickers and buyers. And what about the jobs themselves? Does it increase the penalties to them? Does it increase this from being a misdemeanor to high and aggravated misdemeanor or something more like that? This bill makes clear that if buyers of children for sexual exploitation will face harsh criminal penalties, the same as those that would be given to a trafficker. This is a problem that requires that we no doubt address both the traffickers and the buyers who enable this evil criminal enterprise to exist. The number of arrests that you got during the Super Bowl period, those, were those numbers higher or lower than you thought? And how does it compare to other Super Bowl years? Um, <clears throat> I'll speak and then GBI can join in if I left anything out. Um, I think the numbers that we see nationwide with different cities um, in terms of where the Super Bowl is being hosted is difficult because those have ranged and some of those numbers I think there have been questions about the accuracy of those numbers and arrests. Um, what I will speak on behalf of FBI and GBI about is that these were targeted operations just for human trafficking. Um, the FBI arrests were for trafficking, for pandering, um, for keeping places of prostitution, which traffickers do um, on behalf of our kids. Um, it was for pimping underage and adult um, victims. And on the GBI side, all of their arrests were focused on the buyers, on, on the men and women, I think men in this case, um, who were seeking to purchase sex with underage. So in terms of how it relates to other cities, I'm very proud of the numbers that we had and the coordinated law enforcement efforts. Um, HSI also did a press conference and released, and I think that they had upwards of 40 arrests um, also around trafficking. Um, so while we maybe don't have the numbers for all other types of arrests or recoveries such as um, runaways and things like that, I feel very good and very proud of the numbers that our law enforcement agents were able to get um, specific to trafficking. I'll, I'll just briefly add on that. There's been a great partnership educating law enforcement about the importance of not charging child victims who were re rescued. And so any attempt to determine whether or not there is or isn't a problem based upon prostitution arrests will be very misleading. This bill specifically is going to require that child victims not be charged with prostitution. And so any attempt to correlate whether there have or haven't been investigations based upon that would be misleading. Yes. that are above the age of Just, just to begin, this legislation will provide trauma-informed services and, uh, and prevent a prostitution charge for those under 18. And over the past few years, we've carried legislation that has addressed adults that are subjected to sexual servitude and also individuals with developmental disabilities. And we understand that this is a comprehensive approach that requires that we have treatment available for adult victims as well. Heather, would you? Yes, sir. Sure. I'd just like to add, over the years, we've changed this from the 18 to 21 year old, because as Director Rollins said, a lot of these kids already have had an intervention with defects. A lot of them are part of the DJJ system, juvenile justice, or part of defects through foster care. So if they're in foster care or previously have been in foster care, their age that they're taking care of for therapeutic services is actually 21 years old. And that's significant because you're exactly right talking about that age gap between 
uh, 16 years old and 21 years old, and some of these survivors can attest to that, that they have received those services. And that's a good thing because before they didn't, they automatically went into the criminal juvenile system. And that's what we don't want. We want that victimization instead of criminalization. And specific to your question about the age gap with our consent to sex law being 16, and I know that you, ma'am, asked a question about that as well. I think the important thing for you to know about this bill is that it absolutely does address that. Because the point that we're trying to make here is consent to sex as a 16-year-old with a peer is not the same thing as consenting to being trafficked for sex. That's a very important distinction, and I feel very excited because this bill absolutely addressed that and makes, us, makes that very clear. We'll take one more question. Yes. We talked about the part of this bill that allows you to go after poverty. Um, we talked about hotels. Uh, I'll come to share the tips up here. Uh, we know there are corridors around Metro Atlanta where this is a problem. Uh, opens up the whole lot more. Does it just go after hotels? Does it go after other properties as well, whether it's strip clubs or whether it's uh, truck stops, and things like that? It's oh, sure. One of the things, the highest incidents, when I talk to the Gwinnett County Vice Squad, they talk about extended stay hotels. And I think that's why we're emphasizing we have good players and we have bad players. And that's the distinction of this bill. Over the years, we have engaged with the hotel associations. There are several in the state and several on the national level. And I think that is imperative that we continue that collaboration because the ones we want to go on are the ones on I-85 and the extended stays because that's where we know the predators are that's where we know that kids are being abused and also other women so I think it's imperative we continue that collaboration and this bill is just an extension of our ability to be able to do that so just to be clear the nuisance provision in this bill ap applies to any property it's not a specific type of property and it mirrors existing authorization that DAs have for drug related investigations and crimes and just extends it to sex offenses, which would be locations, potentially, which would be hubs of human trafficking. And so this will allow DAs, when necessary, to pursue these civil nuisance penalties to address the problem areas where human trafficking is occurring. Countries like um, a nightclub that's out of control, it shuts them down, it pulls their license, it pulls their license. There was recently a case in Cobb County, and maybe I could ask Mr. Boring to come up if he's... Um, I, he, I believe he just stepped away, but recently in Cobb County, the nuisance statute was utilized under the uh, drug arrest provisions. And so this incorporates similar language for sexual offenses. Well, thank you all so much for being here. This incredible partnership of advocates, law enforcement, organization work, and the private sector is something that we're incredibly proud of. As House Bill 234 continues through the legislative process, we look forward to updating you on the progress. Thank you so much. Thank you.